Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Velengau and today we are going to review Topcon Triton, a swept source multi-model imaging platform from Topcon. Although it is almost a decade since it was introduced to the market, it's still a formidable OCT. Please stay with me as I review Topcon Triton. So this is the OCT Triton, there is the separate OCT and the computer. On the outside we have two knobs, the first one this is the refractive error compensator and there is also a focus knob, which is on both sides of the machine. There is an external fixator, chin rest and also front rest, focus is also on the other side. The machine is operated using a joystick. Next to the joystick we have a couple of buttons, so firstly we have the uh, chin rest positioning, then we have the internal fixator um, that we can move right with the uh, arrows uh, and then we have the small diaphragm um, split and also the external fixator button and also a locking button. If you want to take any anterior segment photos you need a special attachment for this and also attachment for the headrest. So first you put the lens on and then you also need to put the uh, front rest. Okay, let's start with the software. Let's register new patient. Here you can add all the information including um, the refractive error and the axial length uh, for the patient. So it's, it's pretty uh, sophisticated and extensive. If you add the patient, you can take the images and this is the display on the machine. So we have default, macula, glaucoma, anterior and angioct. Uh, when it comes to uh, glaucoma, there is my favorite uh, scan, which is 12 millimeters containing both the macula and the optic nerve, uh, anterior segment, and there is also angio. You can click the uh, follow-up. In, in this case, there will be a follow-up sc scan for those scans that you've taken before. Uh, so let's take an image and this is what you see. There is no SLO. It's all done using the infrared. The machine will always try to optimize by itself, but you can do it manually as well. And when you're satisfied, you just hit the joystick and then the machine takes an image, OCT together with the fundus photo, and then you can uh, re review the image and delete if you don't like it. This machine offers a unique capture mode and let's imagine you have tiny little lesion on the fundus that you would like to take a b-scan with. Uh, the way to do it is to do a scan that combines both the fundus photo and on this fundus photo you take you need to select a line and the machine will automatically try to find this line and scan uh, through it. This is highly useful for less experienced users as this machine doesn't have an SLO, it only has the infrared and sometimes the infrared is not as sharp. Patient records can also be edited. So you just hit the file management and then you can change the patient's name if, if they change that or change information on the lens or the axial length or the keratometry. You can always change this within the machine. What else? If you took a scan under a wrong patient, you can always reorder the scan to the correct one. After we finish taking the images, it's time to analyze them. So what we can do here, naturally you can just scroll through the images, but there is some more things we can do. We can change the grid, we can overlie, we can put the ETDRS chart as well. We can also do comparison options, so two scans uh, from different visits, from the same visit um, as well, right and left can be also displayed. This is highly useful for a quick comparison. Optic nerve head scans as well can be manually adjusted, so we can firstly manually change the circle around the optic nerve head if we feel that it's not really properly centered. What else? We can naturally see the whole scan and we can put the RNFL view on the photo as well and display multiple options. And there's also a 3D option um, available. There's also an unflattened on-face OCT, which in this machine is called N-View. As you see, I don't feel it's super useful, this type of on-face, but we will see a flattened on-face image net later on. 
Let's look at the reports. Uh, you can edit them. And if you edit them, uh, when it comes to a macular cube, you can change between the information for the retina or the glaucoma. Uh, the same applies to my favorite scan, so 12 millimeter scans, because here you can capture both the macula and the uh, optic nerve in one scan. And here you can see the glaucomatous version before you saw the retina version with the ETDRS on the retinal parameters. This is the ImageNet. This is the program in which you are supposed to view the images. The, the, the first one is for taking and just generating reports. Uh, so this uh, offers you more, for instance, caliper option. What else? OCT and geography. You cannot review OCT and geography in dry OCT Triton software. Here uh, you can. So naturally we see OCT and geography and below we see on face OCT uh, on different layers depending on the segmentation. This is one view of the OCT and geography. Another view is just the traditional view. So you have a fundus photo, you have also the B scan with the flow, and also uh, some sort of uh, on face as well. Um, there's also a third view which is that combines. A great feature of the ImageNet is that you can have the high resolution B scan with the OCT and geography as well. And so that you basically have multi imaging view. And this is very useful because naturally, um, the B scan from the OCT and geography that is not so high resolution. And uh, sometimes you want to see details, we can change color, black and white invert uh, and color, and we can also change the aspect ratio for the B scans. If you have multiple visits, you can compare them using the comparison option. So then you have various visits um, as well. You can change the segmentation. Optic nerve head can also be imaged using OCT and geography. The same applies here. So you have traditional view. view. You can also have on face only or on face and the uh, OCT and geography together. Everything I told you about OCT and geography on ImageNet was true only to the smaller scans when it comes to 9 millimeters and 12 millimeters wider scans. This is the type of display you see. So you can only see one OCT and geography and the arm face on the right side um, as well as the B scan. So there is not so many uh, functions that you can see. The great thing about this type of scans is you can make a mosaics. Unfortunately, our device is quite old and it breaks, the software breaks when we when I try to make mosaics all the time. So uh, I cannot do it. Uh, anyway, you can also make uh, measurements, you can measure lesions, you can measure the foveal avascular zones, and also you can change the display option. Uh, you can superimpose the OCT and geography on the uh, fundus photo if you wish so. When it comes to glaucoma, there is built inside ImageNet plenty of features regarding the comparison of multiple visits. So follow-ups, uh, you can change between the GCL, RNFL. It's all displayed. No matter how many visits you've seen, uh, you will have a nice graph regarding the changes of the RNFL uh, or any other uh, optic nerve head and glaucomatous parameters that you wish so. And it's all built in. You don't need some sort of special equipment. You don't need to buy licenses. So this is very, very nice of Topcon that they build in such a robust software. But on the other side, some of these comparison options are also present in the Triton software, not ImageNet. But here you don't have so many uh, images of the optic nerve uh, and fundus photo that you can compare from only a graph and only uh, possible four images. Oh, right. So let's talk about the advantages of OCT Triton. Well, firstly, our machine is pretty old, right? It's eight years old. We still use it. We don't see any reasons to upgrade. And I think this already is a statement, right? Because if we have bought, say, Cirrus 5000, or let's say OptoView, AngioView, Avanti, that were sold and produced at the same year, most likely we'll need a new one. And I can say that because I still see patients coming from other centers with referrals from those machines with the OCT scans. And I see that they are not as nice as on Triton. And this is really an important statement that if you 
if, if you still have people who are using and who are buying this machine, it's, there is something great about this machine. So naturally, eight years ago, this was a game changer. This was the first really modern OCT. Uh, the permeability uh, through the media opacity was, was amazing. Also, the ability to go under the blood and blood clots in, let's say, vascular AMD was also remarkable. And also the choroid uh, thickness was amazing. But this was eight years ago. Today, I wouldn't say this is really an advantage, even compared to most modern spectral machines uh, offer you high resolution, also permeability is not really an, a, a huge issue. What are the other advantages? Well, I like machines with Fundus Photo. I think this is really, really great idea to have co-registered Fundus Photo and the OCT. So this one has it. And there are multiple scans, a unique scan, which is the 12 millimeters that captures both the um, retina and uh, optic nerve and gives you all the information that you need for the glaucoma to patient, including GCL. So this is, this is certainly great. OCT and geography, I would say at the beginning it was pretty messy, but uh, then after a few upgrades, it was really good. Um, right now, I think it's it's medium, right? It's not it's not really it's it's capable. It it gets the job done, but it's not as detailed and high quality as with Canon or Cirrus. Uh, what else is great? Um, the ease of use, right? It's it's really easy to use with joystick. You don't have any complicated way of acquiring images like with, let's say, Spectralis has. What else? Well, this machine that we have is only capable of taking photos, but there is also Triton Plus that's capable of doing fluorescent geography and autofluorescence. And in that package, you get a full-time multi-modal imaging platform, including fluorescing and geography and the OCT, which is quite interesting. And from what I understand, this is one of the cheapest uh, multi-model imaging platform on the market these days. There's also an anterior segment, photos available. And secondly, you can see follow up from multiple vi visits, whether it's the glaucoma or whether it's the uh, retina. Th this function is freely available, included as a package with the software. So what are the downsides? Well, first is the swept source. And swept source also has downsides like the price. So in our machine that's eight years old, we already needed to replace the light source, the swept source, and it was pricey, right? It's significantly more expensive than spectral domain light source. It might be an issue that the swept source is not as long lasting as the spectral domain light source. However, our machine is extensively used, right? It's, it's really from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. It's constantly used. It's, and it, this was, to be honest, the only issue. So what are the upsides of the swept source? Well, firstly, it's invisible. So the patient is not following the uh, scanning beam, which happens sometimes with the spectral domain. Secondly, because it's 10, 50 nanometers, that's more in, into infrared, uh, the permeability theoretically should be higher, right? So it should get through the uh, denser media opacity for blood or oil better. But this is achieved thanks to slightly lower resolution than with spectral domain. So this is the trade-off. But you can only see this if you compare it to the most advanced spectral domains. Another problem is the duality of softwares, right? So on the one hand, you have ImageNet, which is used extensively among other Topcon machines. But here you have ImageNet, which is which you can use for review images. Um, but then for capturing images, you have this Triton software that also doesn't have the capabilities of the ImageNet, but also ImageNet doesn't have all the capabilities. So it, it's like you need to learn both softwares, which I understand for some users might be an issue. What else? It's not as fast as, let's say, Optopol or Nidec. Um, what else? The size of the scans. It used to be impressive getting 12 millimeter scans. Right now, uh, the best machines have 20 something millimeter scans. So it's really not that shiny anymore. 
Another problem with buying machines like this is that most likely Topcon is working on a newer one. So you might buy this and then Topcon introduces a new OCT and suddenly, you know, the price of your machine, a used one, is going to drop significantly. This is like with cars. If it's no longer produced, if it's no longer sold, then you are going to lose a lot of money uh, when you want to resale that. So this comes to the last question. Is it worth buying? Well, partially, yes, we are still using it. We are still happy and we do not plan to change that in foreseeable future because it's still a very capable machine. And the question is naturally the price. I don't think it's as fast as the latest Nidec test that has 250,000 A scans per second or as versatile as Revo 130 or as high image quality and detailed as the uh, Canon uh, spectral domain OCTs. So it's it's all about the money, right? If you can afford better machines, yeah, do it. Buy yourself a, a mo most modern machine that's out there. And however, if you get a nice price for Triton, then you can think of. And um, secondly, if you are looking for a multi-model imaging platform, but you don't have the money to buy yourself Mirante, uh, you should also consider this because it's still, you know, you will get a nice fundus photo, you will get a nice autofluorescence and also fluorescent in geography and you can correlate this with the OCT for, for a price of that, that doesn't definitely exceed um, 6000 plus Claris together. Because after all, it's a very good OCT. Thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel and goodbye.